So this is my uh, two-tone alarm circuit for EGB240 um, electronics design. So this circuit is meant to be a two-tone alarm using the um, uh, hex inverting switch trigger IC um, 74 HC something something can't remember. Um, so my alarm is basically uh, how do I explain? <laughs> this is what the waveform of the, I guess, the switching looks like. So when it's low, a low fre a lower frequency plays, and when it's high, a higher frequency plays. So I'll plug in the speaker so we can hear what that sounds like. It gets really annoying. So. So it's set to. Um, at the moment, I got it trimmed, so you can see. At the, so these trim pots here, these potentiometers, I can use them to adjust. Um, this one here adjusts the duty cycle between, uh, I guess, low time and switching time. Yeah. So this so this signal here is doing the switching between the high and low tone and this signal here is doing the switching between the basically switching that other signal on and off um, and if I just set up the clippy thing sorry I don't know the technical word for it um, so I can hook up my probe here um, then I can adjust this duty cycle with this potentiometer I think it's this way. It must be the other way. So this basically gives you. This is one of those 25 turn pots. In the um, PCB version of this, I'm, I'm just using a one turn, like the regular like one. So this one basically reduces the amount of time that it's switching between high and low. So we can listen to that now, and it'll be sound a bit different. Oh, I've got a loose wire now. So you're only getting like two beats now. Um, so you can see we're getting like two and a half beeps, and you can use that potential to adjust that. Now the other um, other trim part is to adjust the duty cycle between um, the these the due cycle of these faster pulses um, so if I can just turn this back to normal mode um, what time scale am I on? it's probably need to go like here yeah there we go and I set this trigger yeah right on the edge I think it's a little bit out of phase here Okay, there we go. Okay, so okay, let's sort of level it. There we go. Okay. So this other trim pot adjusts the duty cycle of the pulses, uh, so I can make them really short, like like that, or quite long, like that. I found you probably want some longer ones, generally around maybe 75% duty cycle. Um, sounds good, otherwise, the, sh the high pitch pulses are just too fast to hear them properly. So something like that seems to be good. Yes, that's the circuit. Um, and the LED is just hooked up, I guess, on the output of um, this signal or the inverted version of that. So I'm passing it. I had a spare. Uh, Schmidt trigger because I'm only using five uh, to actually complete the generation of the sound of the waveform. So I had a spare one which I'm passing uh, that signal, inverting it in one of the Schmidt triggers, and then outputting it through this LED. And the output stage of the um, of the uh, two. Um, uh, oscillators, uh, I guess, summed together with these.
100 ohm resistors into this. This is, this is an NPM. I didn't. I couldn't find any MOSFETs lying around that were the right size. So I just NPM fine, and that's uh, just uh, switching the um, piezoelectric buzzer on the three volt rail. Actually, it's plugged into the three volt, three point three at the moment. Um, through my uh, hacked computer power supply, but it's meant to run off two AA batteries, so three volts. Anyway, let's have a look at the PCB. So this is the PCB I designed. So um, this subject is about um, is not only the development of the circuit on the breadboard, but also uh, transferring that into PCB design. So I use Altium. Um, it's my tool of choice for this kind of stuff. Um, so it's fairly simple, two-sided board. Um, you can see here potentiometer one and two, um, and they are these things, um, vertical ones. Um, so we're going to be ordering those. Um, quite a lot of diodes, I think. I could have cut down on the diodes, um, but two of them, you'll see in a second, that I need four of them just for the duty cycle and the potentiometer thing. Um, these, and then, yeah, but I'm not the best at analog circuits. I'm, I like digital stuff, <laughs> microcontrollers and things like that. Um, you can see the, the buzzers over here, here's the, the NPN. Um, four, four capacitors, LED goes here. Um, these are strain relief holes, so you kind of like weave the um, uh, wires through here and then into here from the battery. There's a switch, um, just a simple um, single pole. Uh, sorry, double the pole, single throw. Um, and then I put a, a number of these um, test points here, here, and over here for um, easy probing. Um, <laughs> yeah. I've, um, something I've forgotten to do in the past when I've designed boards is put, like, test, test points on them, so I'm going to start doing that now. Uh, yeah, um, let's go to, that's what it looks like on the top layer, on the bottom layer, oh yeah, it's a bit hard to see. I think it's fairly good, um, I did some VS stitching as well, just to make sure everything's well grounded, because there are a few long ground paths, like this one for example, has to go all the way around here to go to the battery, so um, with the stitching it's um, the path is just straight across here basically. Um, so, yep, um, I'm, I'm a fourth year electric, well, yeah, I'm in my final semester of electrical engineering, but this is the second new unit that I have to take for whatever reason, who knows, I don't know. And this is the schematic, so the starting off is the power stuff, battery, switch, um, and power for the chip. It's pretty simple. And you can see I'm using all six um, Schmidt, uh, Schmidt triggers. So this first stage is um, the low frequency oscillator, so this is controlling the, um, the state, uh, this, this is switching between uh, off and toggling. So, um, and this is my little duty cycle solution, so, uh, when it's on, yeah, so when it's on, uh, current's flowing through this side of the potentiometer, and when it's off, current's flowing through this side. Did I get that right? Yeah, so that's how you get that ratio. Um... This diode's feeding in and biasing this, the input of the next Schmidt trigger. So when, obviously when this one's high, this Schmidt trigger's output, when this, uh, this oscillator here, that's one oscillator, it's, when its output is high, this Schmidt trigger, um, outputs a low signal, so its output is just pulled to low, um, and therefore it doesn't, it just, um, turns... Um, this one on, because this is an inverter, and only this one flies. So this is the low frequency tone oscillator here. Um, 
And then when this is... I might have got my logic around the wrong way. But in the other case, where this oscillator is turned on, um, i.e. this isn't being, is this isn't pulling it high, then this one is um, using this duty cycle thingy to um, toggle between these two. So this is a high frequency oscillator, um, so it's going <laughs> between these. And this is just an inverter, right? So when this one, so when this line is, so when this one is on, this one is off, and when that one's on, that one's off. And this is just my um, taking that signal, inverting it, and passing it through an LED just for aesthetics. And you can see the output stage. Um, the piezoelectric buzzer in parallel with this resistor on the um, collector of this NPM. Um, and these two resistors, um, you can use them, you could use them to control the relative volume of one tone of the other, I think. Actually, no, you can't, never mind, don't worry about that. <laughs> um, I had a previous, I had a different solution before you could do that, but, yep. Um, and these are the test points, obviously, that I got here. Yeah, so, yeah, that's my thing for EGB240. Thanks for watching.